it Vienna You city of a million something or others La 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 something else Good afternoon Jeeves Good afternoon sir No 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 that's the song Jeeves and a dash wrong song it is, too. I don't know how they think them up, Jeeves. No, sir, it is one of the great mysteries. I mean, fancy writing a song about saying good night to a whole city. I mean, you might as well say, um, good afternoon, Manchester, or fancy bumming into you, Basingstoke. Yes, sir. Or, I didn't see you at the club last night, Cleethorpes. <laughs> I take your point, sir. Perhaps if you were to sing the rest of the lyric, it might throw some light on the matter. Ah, well, there's the rub, Jeeves. I don't know the rest of the lyric. I heard it at the cinema last night, and that's all I can remember. It goes, um, uh, good night, Vienna. You city of a million. Or it may have been a thousand. Some fairly substantial number, anyway. I, you know, Jeeves, I wonder if old Uncle George isn't thinking of going off to foreign parts. Sir? Well, it's just that he's asked me to ankle round to his club to discuss some urgent matter or other. Mm. Morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, Lord Yaxley. Young Lord Yaxley in the dining room, sir. Right. But he won't want to be disturbed at his luncheons. Uh, well, he did say it was quite urgent. Oh, well, off you go. Thank you. What up, Uncle George? Ah, Bertie, sit down, sit down. Don't eat much at midday, I'm afraid. It's my stomach lining. My man in Harley Street says he's very sensitive. Mm -hmm. Had your luncheon? Uh, yes, thanks, I have, yes. Good. I got a message that uh, it was urgent. Oh, it is? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. What I wanted to ask you was, Where'd you get those ties you wear? Ties? He, he like that. Uh, Blucher's in the Burlington Arcade. Good. Good. Thank you. I'm not so old. So old as what? Properly considered, I'm in my prime. Besides, what a young and inexperienced girl needs is a man of weights and years to lean on. Great Scott, Uncle George. You're not thinking of getting married. Yes, confound you, I am thinking of getting married. And if your Aunt Agatha comes sticking her oar in, I'll... Well, I'll know what to do about it. Man's as young as he feels. My Uncle George is thinking of doing, Jeeves. Contracting a matrimonial alliance, sir. Good Lord, how did you know that? Oddly enough, sir, I happen to be acquainted with the other party in the matter. The girl? Yes, sir, but it was from her aunt, a Mrs Wilberforce, who resides with her, that I received the information. So who is she, this other person? A Miss Rhoda Platt, sir, of Wisteria Lodge, Kitchener Road, East Dulwich. Young? Yes, sir. The old fathead. Yes, sir. Uh, the expression is one which I would, of course, not employ myself, sir, but I confess to thinking his lordship ill-advised. One must remember, however, that it is not unusual to find gentlemen of a certain age yielding to a sentimental urge. The phenomenon is particularly noticeable, I'm given to understand, in the United States of America, amongst the wealthier inhabitants of the city of Pittsburgh. It's notorious, I'm told, that sooner or later, unless restrained, they always endeavour to marry a chorus girl. The high turnover rate of chorus girls in the state of Pennsylvania has been a matter of comment for some time in the public prints. You finished, Jeeves? Thank you, sir. Yes. Yes, from Uncle George's manner, as he referred to my Aunt Agatha's probable reception to the news, I gather that Miss Platt is not of the noblesse. Uh, no, sir. She is a waitress. Good Lord. Well, how is Aunt Agatha going to take to that? She's not like me, Jeeves. I'm broad-minded. If Uncle George wants to marry a waitress, let him, say I. The rank is but the penny stamp. The guinea stamp, sir. The poet Burns was writing at a time when... It... Never mind the poet Burns, Jeeves. No, sir. Expunge the poet Burns from your mind. I have already done so, sir. What about the Aunt Agatha? She will kick, Jeeves. 
Very probably, sir. <coughs> she is a lady of strong opinion. Yes, that'll be the curse of the Worcesters now, if I'm any judge. Oh, Agatha! How nice to see you. Come on! I Wait. wish to speak to you, Bertie. Oh, right. I'm <coughs> greatly upset. I'm sorry to have to tell you that my brother has gone mad. Uh, well? He called on me this morning and announced his intention of marrying some impossible girl from South Norwood. East Dulwich, Jeeves informed me. And pray, what does Jeeves know about it? He's met the girl. Has he indeed? And who is she? She's a waitress. Waitress? First a barmaid at the Criterion, and now a waitress. Well, the barmaid was 30 years ago, Aunt Agatha. She must be dealt with in the same way. We shall offer her money to release your Uncle George from her thrall. Well, just as you like, of course, but whenever people do that in books, the girl gets the sympathy every time. She draws herself up and looks at them with clear, steady eyes, causing them to feel not a little cheesy. What trash you do read, Bertie. I sometimes despair of you. Well, I just think you're going to find it dashed embarrassing offering this girl money. I am not proposing to do any such thing. You will undertake the negotiations. Me? Certainly. Here is a cheque. For 100 pounds, that should be ample. But the essential point is that your uncle must be released from this grim entanglement. And what if she draws herself up and looks at me with clear, steady eyes? If it's not troubling you too much, Bertie, I should be greatly obliged if you would stop driveling. Oh, right. You can get to East Dulwich in half an hour. There is a frequent service of trains. And you will come direct to Pont Street on your return. Yes, I'll take <coughs> you can't see Rhody yet. She's asleep. Well, when you've got flu, you can't sleep at night sometimes, can you? Ah, Miss Platt's got the flu. Well, that's for you to say. But while you're here, I'd like you to take a look at my knee. Uh, uh what for? Oh, <laughs> you are a one. What do you think? Well, <laughs> terrific. It's a sort of shooting pain. Just comes and goes. And I'll tell you something funny. Oh, uh, what's that? Lately. I've had the same sort of pain here, at the end of my spine. I wish you'd take a look. Uh, no, 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 no. No. Uh, no. no. Um, knees, yes. Spines, no. You're a funny sort of doctor. Doctor? Aren't you the doctor? No. <laughs> You'll be the death of me. Have me showing you all I got to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. No, I've, uh, I've actually come here to see Miss Platt. What about? Well, well nothing really. Um. My uncle heard she was seedy. Your uncle? Yes, Lord Yaxley. Oh, you're his nephew. That's right, yes. Uh, I expect he's always popping in and out of here, is he? No, I've never set eyes on him. Rhoda talks about him a lot, but she's never so much as asked him to look in for a cup of tea. But, uh, there's no doing anything with girls these days, is there? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no, no, not much, no. Well, um, I'd better be tooling off then. Oh. I'll show you to the door. Oh, right. I have never heard anything so spineless in all my life. Well, I'm sorry. Can a chap say more? You know, I, I lost my nerve. Could have happened to anyone. Not to anyone with a spine. You will go and see the girl again tomorrow, Bertie, and this time you will do as I told you. But dash it, Aunt Agatha. And kindly do not use that sort of language in my presence. You may go now. Ah, oh, um, Jeeves. Uh, no, no, don't get up. Um, now, look, Jeeves, I know this is your night off, uh, and all that, and normally, of course, I wouldn't intrude. Is Mrs. Gregson in good spirits, sir? Uh, no, Jeeves, she is not. 
she wants me to go down to East Dulwich again tomorrow. Frankly, I just wish somebody could come up with a better idea for getting rid of Uncle George's folly. Ha. Huh. Have you come up with one of your corkers, Jeeves? <clears throat> Modesty forbid, sir, but uh, it did occur to me to wonder whether in your expedition to East Dulwich you encountered the young person's aunt, Mrs Wilberforce. Jeeves, I encountered nothing but Mrs Wilberforce. <clears throat> it is Mrs Wilberforce's intention to continue residing with her niece after the latter's marriage, so... Mm -hmm. She's a kind-hearted woman, but definitely of the people. Should he meet her, this might give his lordship pause. You mean, if I were to invite Uncle George and Mrs Wilberforce to lunch tomorrow? Precisely, sir. Jeeves, you've done it again. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, kitchen. So, Jeeves, how did you come to meet this uh, Mrs. Wilberforce and Miss Platt? Uh, through a young fellow of my acquaintance, Sam. Uh, what young fellow of your acquaintance? Colonel Mannering Smith's personal gentleman's gentleman, sir. He and Miss Platt at one time had an understanding, and I accompanied him to Wisteria Lodge to meet her. Ah, so they broke it off, and Uncle George got her on the rebound. So, what did they quarrel about? They did not quarrel, Sam. But when his lordship, your uncle, began to pay his addresses, she was naturally flattered and began to waver between love and ambition. Ah, so if your scheme works and Uncle George edges out, it'll do your pal a bit of good. Precisely, sir. My friend Smethurst would regard it as a consummation devoutly to be wished. Well, that's rather well put, Jeeves. Is that your own? No, sir. The Swan of Avon, sir. Oh. Mrs. Wilberforce, sir. Mrs. Wilberforce? <laughs> oh, I'm going to keep a straight face. With you standing behind me saying, Can I attempt modern with a potato? I shall never know. <laughs> I know him, you know. He's been to tea around at our house. Yes, yeah, so he told me. See you later. <laughs> oh. oh, nice place you got here. They were, uh, I like more pink about myself. It's cheerful. What's that you got there? Cocktails? Martini with a spot of absinthe. Oh, God! Don't you try and make me drink that stuff. What that does to the lining of your stomach. Oh, I don't know. Well, I do, dear. And if you'd been a barmaid as long as I was, you'd know too. Oh, you were a barmaid? <laughs> was I? For years I was, when I was younger, at the Criterion. There you are, you see. It's that stuff. Makes your hands wobble. Give me a drop of port any old time. Um, uh, when you were at the Criterion, did you ever run into anyone with my name? Foster? No, dear, not that I know of. No, 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 Worcester. He's Lord Yaxley now. Worcester? Lord Yaxley. Ah, oh, Bertie, this is me. Steward about this. Oh, come off it, Ophie. You're just a rotten player. Yeah. No, that was a perfect shot. Bridge steady, smoothly back. Oh, Good eye. <clears throat> Mr. Worcester, sir. Oh, dash it, Rogers. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir, but there's a lady asking for you, a Mrs. Gregson. Ah, I spy aunt. Uh, yes, well, I haven't even had lunch yet. Could you tell her I'm not here? Well, I've already told her that, so she's most insistent. <sighs> Very well. Let me try Bertie's cue. Ah, yes, that's better, that's better. Ah, oh. oh, 
our Bertie. Hello, Aunt Agatha. Your uncle is not going to marry the girl after all. Not? Apparently he's been thinking it over and now sees the wisdom of what I told him. The surprising thing is that he is going to marry somebody else. He is? An old friend of his, a Mrs. Wilberforce, a widow of sensible age, he gives me to understand. I wonder which of the Wilberforces that would be. There are two main branches to the family. The Essex Wilberforces and the Cumberland Wilberforces. And the East Dulwich Wilberforces. What did you say, Bertie? Uh, nothing, Aunt Agatha, really nothing. I do wish you would speak more clearly, Bertie. I've had to tell you about it before. Ah, Jeeves. No, well, I don't know if you're aware of it, but this binge has depreciated your stock considerably. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Well, you might at least have ascertained that she was Uncle George's barmaid. I did, sir. What? The young man Smethers did approach me in the hope that I might be able to do something to further his cause with Miss Platt, sir. There will now be no obstacle to their union. Well, that's all fine and large, Jeeves, but what about Uncle George? You've landed him nicely in the cart. No, sir, if I might take the uh, liberty of opposing your view. I fancy Mrs. Wilberforce will make an admirable mate for his lordship. Oh, no, 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 Jeeves, think. You said yourself only yesterday that Maudy Wilberforce is definitely of the people. Sturdy lower middle class stock, sir. A much needed injection of fresh blood. Now, perhaps you would like to change before the journey, sir. I thought you could drive down after lunch while I take the baggage by train. What train? What journey? Why are we packing? Uh, your uncle has taken Mrs. Wilberforce to meet Mrs. Gregson this afternoon, sir. He's taken her to meet Aunt Agatha. I think perhaps if we were to leave the metropolis for a while, it might be expedient, sir. And if you recall, Lord Wickhamsley invited us down to Twing some time ago for the village festivities. Mm. I think we ought to go before lunch, don't you, Jeeves? Huh. Just as you say, Mr. Well? Well? I'm waiting. Mummy, please. I simply want an answer from your father. I bitterly regret now that I was so kind and forgiving when he lost the Rolls Royce to Lord Ickenham last year. Oh, that was just a run of bad luck, Drusilla. I had three kings Enough. and he... As for this latest outrage... Not in front of the guests, Mummy. I am sorry if I'm embarrassing the guests. But what I have to say applies equally to them. There will be no more betting of any sort in this house. Oh, I say. No. Oh. Just a few little bets, hmm? No. I have said all I intend to say on the matter. Oh, Jimbles. Inside, behind the bar. Her name is Myrtle. Isn't she beautiful? She's a tender goddess, isn't she? She is, she is. You can see it, can't you? What happened to Daphne? Daphne? The one who came after Honoria. Passing fancy, Bertie. The folly of one's youth. 
It was only a week and a half ago. Myrtle was up in town to see her uncle. We met on top of a bus. She was... Hello, Steggles. Come and meet my friend Bertie Worcester. And you do. This is Rupert Steggles. What ho, Steggles? I'm going inside. This fresh air is getting into my lungs. He's staying at Lord Wickmersley's too. Snappy dresser. I wish you wouldn't hang around Myrtle all the time, though. She doesn't like it. I say, Bertie, do you want to come in on a little flutter? You interest me strangely, old bird. There's one thing we Worcesters are positively dripping with. It's sporting blood. Steggles has decided to make a book on the sports of the village fate. Say, I think I can put you in the way of making a parcel on the mother's sack rays. Lead on, old scout. The idea is an attractive one, sir. Unfortunately, Lady Wickhamsley has come down strongly against any form of betting at Twing. Partly, I understand, as a result of his lordship losing the East Wing in a game of shove halfpenny last week. Oh, this is bad news, Jeeves. Indeed, sir. It was only the strongest possible representations to the other party involved and the passage of a considerable sum in money that saved the old place. No, no, I meant about the betting. I'm so looking forward to the fete on Monday. Me too. I love all those races they have. <laughs> yes. My favourite are the boys and girls mixed animal potato <laughs> race. <laughs> What on earth is that? Oh, well, oh, it's wonderful. You all get into couples, and each couple is given an animal noise to make and a potato. And one of you stands in a fixed spot, holding the potato and making the animal noise. Mewing like a cat or barking like a dog. <laughs> and the other one has a bag over his head. And has to try and find his partner. I've forgotten what the potato's for. Well, damn difficult to estimate for many are. Hugo. Right, you got the race car? Yes, come on. But you know the most wonderful thing? Later. Guess who I got Later. it from? Later. Guess who I got it from? I got it from Myrtle. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Oh, you can still smell a scent on it. See? No, thank you, Bingo. <laughs> can we get on? Right. Um, the girls under 12 egg and spoon race. Any thoughts about that, Jeeves? Last year's winner, Sarah Mills, is the favourite, sir. What are her chances? I haven't seen the gallops, of course, but I understand little Sarah carries a beautiful egg. She... He's not here. Jeeves. It's Lady Cynthia, sir. We thought you were your mother. Oh, no, she's too busy giving Daddy his evening lecture. Rupert Steggles thinks you're forming a syndicate. What rot. Can I join? Absolutely. Oh, thank you. We were just going through the card. Right. Carry on, Bingo. Uh, Mother's sack race. Ah, oh, now, you know something about that. A gift for Mrs. Penwither, the tobacconist's wife. I was in a shop yesterday buying some cigarettes, and she told me that she'd won three times at fairs in Worcestershire. She only moved here a few weeks ago, so, so no one knows about her yet. Risk a tenner each way, Jeeves? I think so, sir. Uh, her father's hat trimming contest. Mm, a very speculative event, sir. Married couple's three-legged long jump? Advocate any large scale disbursement. Ah, uh, Mr. Wooster. Oh, what ho, James? <coughs> I hoped I might find you here, sir. Positively animated, Jeeves. I'm sorry, sir. <coughs> I have information regarding the choir boy's handicap, sir. The probable winner of that event is even now under the very roof of Twing Hall. Harold, sir, the page boy. I don't see it, Jeeves. He's practically circular. The boy is a flyer, sir. How do you know? I happened to be pursuing him this morning with a view to fetching him a clip on the side of the head. Great Scott, Jeeves, you! <clears throat> the lad is of an outspoken disposition, sir, and had made an opprobrious remark respecting my appearance. What did he say about your appearance? I do not recall, sir, but it was opprobrious. I attempted to correct him, but he outdistanced me by yards and made good his escape. 
This is sensational. We are sure, are we, Jeeves? That sounds like the off now, is it? My second James. Mr. Worcester, Mr. Little, Mr. Whitton. What in God's name are you doing there? <laughs> we, uh, we, yes. uh, we... Wow. <clears throat> the young gentleman had expressed an interest in horticulture, my lady. I was enlightening them as to the life cycle of the earthworm. Essential grounding, I have always felt, for a proper understanding of the subject. Oh. Oh, I see. Very well, then. Do carry on. Thank you, my lady. <clears throat> Observe, gentlemen, the distended saddle on this specimen. What a joy. What are those Hello, Worcester. Morning, Myrtle. Mr. Worcester. Hello. Have a word? <coughs> now then, touching on the choir boy's hundred yard handicap, I'd like to place a small bet on Harold Harmsworth. The fat boy. Well, we're quoting um, 18 to 1 at the moment. 18 to 1. There you are. To win, antipost. 20 pounds to win? Do you know something? Know something? No, I, no, 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 I just, uh, just like the name. Harold, Harold Hartsworth. It's got a sort of ring to it, don't you think? Harold Hartsworth. Well, I think it has anyway. Whenever I... Yes, yes, and never mind about that. Thank you. Good shot, Bingo. Thank you, Bertie. Not looking very doleful. Myrtle went to the cinema in Marketingham with Steggles last night. Ah, yes. Well, you know what Kipling said? The F of the S is much more D than the M. Really? Well, Jeeves, what do you think? Well, if I might paraphrase the poet, sir, I think perhaps we should be valiant but not too venturous. Ah, yes, but was the poet's ball plugged into the bramble 200 yards from the green and surrounded by trees? <clears throat> he made no mention of it, sir. Mm. Perhaps I can suggest um, that a spade mashie or even a mashie niblick onto the fairway would be the intelligent shot. Oh, I agree. Uh, leaving us with a simple pitch onto the green. Uh, yes, but we Worcesters are made of sterner stuff. Hand me my number two iron. Very good, sir. Thank you, Jeeves. Very good, sir. Thank you, Jeeves. Say that again. Well, part of the secret I've found is not to close my eyes till I'm almost at the top of the backswing. Very interesting. That's what two pounds ten you owe me. I'll just get some change in the bar. Wait here for five minutes. So, where did it come down, Jeeves? <clears throat> I'm not altogether certain that it did, sir. What, you mean it's still in the air? Hefty hit, eh? Yes, sir. I fancy, however, that our next stroke may pose us some small difficulty. What a ridiculous place to leave a tree. Right. Yes, I think, um, I think stroke and distance, don't you, eh, Jeeves? Just shin up there and get it for me, will you? I say, Jeeves, isn't that Harold the page boy over there? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I believe he comes here caddying on his days off. Uh, the few shillings he earns buys food to supplement his diet. Hmm. Well, whoever owns that club he's ruining isn't going to be too pleased. You enjoyed the game, Steggles. Me too. Hey, you! <laughs> well, I don't see that it affects us. We're all at a good price. I put us on at anti-post odds for this very reason. So that we'd have nothing to lose by Harold's form becoming known. It affects us all right if it doesn't start at all. What do you mean? Jeeves said Steggles may try to nobble him before the race begins. No. 
Good Lord. There's all sorts of ways of nobbling favourites. You ought to read some of those racing novels. In Pipped at the Post, Lord Jasper Maleverer outs Bonnie Betsy by bribing the head lad to slip a cobra into her stalls the night before the derby. Well, I can't imagine where Steggles is going to get hold of a cobra. You wouldn't like to stand guard in Harold's room, would you, Freddy? No fear. What are the chances of a cobra biting Harold, do you think? Well, from the look of Harold, it's the snake I'd be worried about. So, as we look around the valley of our lives, do we, like Ezekiel, see nothing but dry bones? Do we, like Ezekiel, doubt the Lord's capacity to animate these bones? Do we doubt the Lord's miraculous powers? Do we shake our heads when the Lord asks us, can these bones live? Oh, do we, with the Lord's help, ah! do we, with the Lord's help, ah! put breath back ah! into these ah! bones? It is up ah! to us, isn't it? Ah! The Son of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Ah! I have warned you about this before. Oh. Really good, Vicar. Well so done. So glad. Splendid, splendid. From this moment, you cease to be a member of my choir. <laughs> Go, miserable boy. I didn't want to be in your rotten choir anyway. Those bets, old boy. I'm afraid you lose your money. What do you mean? As I recall them, the race rules read, open to all those members of the choir whose voices have been broken for the second Sunday in Epiphany. Members of the choir, you notice. Well, all the... It's a pity you didn't opt for the starting price. I always think SP's the only safe way. Talk about the purity of the turf. A most ingenious young gentleman, Mr. Steggles, sir. Bally swindler, you mean? It would now seem that for this afternoon's sports, we rely entirely upon Mrs. Penworthy and the Mother's Sacres. Uh, not entirely, Jeeves. Indeed, sir. Now I've entered bingo in the 80 yards dash for mature gentlemen. Mr. Little, sir? Mm, I can't seem to buck him over this myrtle business, and a win on the field of tourney does wonders in the way of impressing the ladies. <coughs> if I may say so, sir, I think that when the organisers use the word mature, they are in fact using it as a euphemism for elderly. Quite. So you'll obviously start as favourite. Now, if we put, say, £50 on bingo to win, well, the syndicate can take steggles to the cleaners. Yes, if I may also say so, I think that Mr Little is bound to start at such very short odds. Oh, tush, Jeeves. Faint heart never won lots of money. £50 on Mr Little to win. I fear, sir, that even so substantial an investment as £50 will yield little more than pennies. All right, then. Make it... a oh, hundred. I still believe, sir. I'm not afraid of no Mrs. Hodges. No, 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 of course not. Rubbish, she is. Thank you. Roll up, roll up, three shies a penny. Three shies a penny. It's Myrtle. Don't look. 
Well, what are you telling me for, then? Oh, look at her, Bertie. You just told me not to. She walks in beauty like the worst of Bertie. But why don't you go and speak to her? Oh, I couldn't. But I... I will. All couples from the three-legged race report to the starter's table now. And Cynthia, starter's orders. Take over, Mavis. Right, here, Cynthia. We're back to winner on this one. And what's more, Mr. and Mrs. Puckeridge are completely incorruptible. Chap, could I crave a boon? Anything, sir. I hear young Steggles is making a book on sports. Would you place a bet for me? You there? Oh. Oh. What are you doing with that money? Yeah, well, I was just asking young Worcester here to buy me a slice of Eccles cake, my dear. Any Eccles cake that you require, Hugo. I will get. Come. 21 or over, you get a prize. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vicar. Good luck. Ah, uh, Worcester, my dear fellow. I must say I'm delighted at the way you young chaps are throwing yourself in the spirit of our little festivity. Oh, nothing I like better, Vicar. Even Rupert Steggles. Between ourselves, I have never thought of Rupert Steggles as a sort of chap who would put himself out to further the enjoyment of others. And yet, twice in the last half hour, I have seen him escort Mrs. Penworthy to the refreshment tent. Worcester, I want oh, yeah. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, excuse me. Uh, this hat. Oh, Mrs. Penworthy's. Mrs. Penworthy's that hat, isn't it, Mrs. Nice. Penworthy's, yes. She was here with that Mr. Steggles. Steggles. Did you serve her any drink? No, it was the food, wasn't it, Daisy? Well, I thought it must be for a party. Four of them pork pies he bought her. And three pieces of fruitcake. And then she had two servings of the trifle after the ice cream. On your mark. Get set, go! Interested in the mother's sacres, Mr. Worcester? What? Uh, no. Oh, well, that's to say yes. Um, development of the thoroughbred, you know. Thoroughbred? Right, Jeeves, the hour approaches. A hundred pounds, Mr. Little, on the nose. A hundred pounds. A hundred pounds, Bertie? Bingo, I want to show you another. It's, uh, well done, Mr. Duncan. And now, Miss Watson. Thank you, Vicar. Oh, too far over here. Only four competitors with the bell so far. Three balls from Penny. Take your with a prize. All for Penny, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, dear. I don't know what to... I think we shall have to cancel the event. That's right. 
this is rapidly turning into a rout. You're our last chance, Bingo. Suppose I lose, though. You can't possibly lose. Your youngest competitor is 65, and his bunions were playing him up this morning. You can get a bet on for me, Cynthia, can't you? All right, Daddy. But for goodness sake, don't tell Mummy. Don't tell Mummy what? Three shies, darling, thank you. Thank you. Here you are, Hugo, do you good? Your Aunt Agatha's not down here, is she? Good Lord, no. It's all right, Maudie. We went to see her. Oh, it was awful. Well, you're quite safe down here. <sighs> now, tell me, Bertie, is the vicar about anywhere? Oh, absolutely, he's, uh, he's over there. Why? Want to get the bands read, as a matter of fact. Before she catches up with us. Come on, Piggy! <laughs> I'd say, Chiefs, it couldn't hang on to this for me during the race, could it? With great pleasure, sir. May I introduce Beryl, sir? Beryl, this is Mr. Little. I say. Mr. Little is the gentleman who is going to win the 80 yards dash for us. Oh, I'm so looking forward to the race, Mr. Little. Richard's the name. I know you'll win. Well. Good luck. Richard. Oh. My friends call me Bingo. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Mature and gentlemen's race is about to begin. Assemble at the start, gentlemen. Please. Hey, James, have you seen Bingo? That's Mr. Little coming up to the start now, sir. Right, I shall be watching this one from the tape. Very good, Sam. Mm. Oh, your oh, Come on, Dad. Get set. Go! This, sir. This is the end, Jeeves. Everything we've worked and prayed for. A hundred pounds, Jeeves. The darkest hour is proverbially just before the dawn, sir. I say, Jeeves! Have you seen Beryl? Uh, not since the race, sir. I've got to find it, Jeeves. What a wonderful girl! Yes, sir. Would you care for your jacket, sir? Thank you, Jeeves. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How could he lose, Jeeves? That fellow who won, Charlie Benbo, was old enough to give Bingo's grandmother the glad eye. Mr. Steggles. Excuse me. Excuse me. Betting slips? No, I... You may catch the train direct to London, Mr. Steggles. Your things will be sent on. As for your ill-gotten gains, yeah. they will go towards the new church roof. Yeah. 
It can all be arranged, old Axley. Thank you so much. <laughs> Goodbye, Vicar. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Vicar. <laughs> Ah, Vicar, a little something for the fun. A pen. Oh. Oh. Well, you'll very well pardon me for saying so, Jeeves, but you seem to have landed us in a complete mess. All right, then, was it, Mr Jeeves? Beautifully judged, Beryl, thank you. I'll see you later in the Five Crowns. All right, Mr Jeeves, bye-bye. Yes, sir. Probably none of my business, Jeeves, but may I ask you what you were thanking that young lady for? I have a confession to make, sir. Oh, yes? I requested the girl Beryl to shout at Mr Little at the strategic moment. You did what, Jeeves? I surmise that Myrtle is a large-hearted girl who would more readily sympathise with a gallant loser, sir. Yes, but Bingo doesn't care a fig about Myrtle. You heard him. It's all Beryl now. Yes, sir, I must confess that uh, <clears throat> where the fair sex is concerned, Mr Little is rather quicker out of the gate than even I had imagined. So, you ruined the Syndicate just for Bingo? Uh, not quite, sir. The Syndicate is well into profit, I'm happy to say. Oh, profit, Jeeves? Every single thing we backed was either scratched, axed, nobbled, or fell at the first fence. We lost a hundred pounds on bingo alone. <clears throat> what do you mean? <clears throat> Is that a <clears throat> of remorse, Jeeves? Well, I hope so. I'm afraid I couldn't bring myself to place the bet on Mr. Little, sir. What? Well, Jeeves, I distinctly told you. Hmm. You mean we didn't lose the hundred? Indeed not, sir. I took it into my head to put what I believe is called in racing parlance a bundle on Charlie Benbow at 15 to 1. Sir. 15 to 1? Jeeves! A further safeguard, of course, was to collect our winnings before I informed Lady Wickhamsley of Mr. Steggall's activities. Jeeves, you're a wonder. Thank you, sir. We do our best. <laughs> 